What's up guys, welcome to new Unreal Engine 5 tutorial and today we are continuing with the RPG tutorial series. We will begin with the vaulting system and we will take use of the new Unreal Engine 5's feature, motion warping, to create a nice interpolation between the target points. It's gonna be a very easy build to follow, so let's get started. <laughs> Alright, so the first thing that we have to do is basically enable the motion warping plugin. So let's go up here into edit, go into plugins, and now we can search for motion warping. Now you can see this uh, plugin over here. Now it is in beta, but don't worry, it is you know very advanced. There's not any problem with it. I have experimented with it a lot, and we want to make use of it. So there's no problem. Let's go ahead and tick it, and then again a pop-up will show up. This in beta. They say yes, and now this uh, other pop-up will appear, and now it will say that we have to restart the editor. Let's go ahead and say restart. Okay, so once you have restarted the project, of course, if you didn't see the pop-up, you can just manually close it. So let's go ahead and just manually uh, type in again motion warping, just to make sure that indeed it is enabled. Okay, so now we can close this, and now what we have to do is go ahead and import the vaulting animation. So again, I have left it in the description, which is just an example animation from the Epic Games Echo template. So it is completely free and available. But you know, to make things easier, I have just left it in a simple download. So we're gonna go into characters, characters, RPG character animations. And now what we're going to do is create a new folder, which is gonna be vaulting, okay? Vaulting or parkour, but I think vaulting is good. So later on, we will have different modes of vaulting and jumping in and out of different places. Right now, we're going to do just one, but later on, we can add more variations. So what we're going to do is just open the folder and I'm going to get the vault over animation, which I have left in the description. And now we can just go ahead and drag it into the content browser. And now this window will go ahead and pop up. So again, just press reset, uh, reset to default. So the defaults. Uh, all the options are by default and now we can go ahead and just set the skeleton which in our case it will be the SK mannequin Again, don't make the mistake of choosing the old UE4 one. We want the new UE5 one. Just the simple SK mannequin And now we can just say import and there we go. We'll have a warning with some bones and stuff. Don't worry Everything is fine. If we go ahead and open the animation and we'll put it over here You can see how cool it is looking. So yeah, this is the vaulting animation so the thing that we have to do over here is go into the asset details. Now, if you don't see any of these windows, you can just go into windows and open it up. Okay. Now, what we have to do is go into this room motion section and just enable your room motion. Now, room motion is an animation that will have some uh, transform uh, transformation in the wall space. So this will have a motion and it will move. Okay. We'll see how it looks in a second. Now, leave everything as default. So uh, reference pose. Uh, disabled force, uh, force uh, root lock and then normalize ticked on and now we can just go ahead and save and close it so what we have to do now is go ahead and convert this animation into an animation montage so an animation montage like i mentioned in the last episode it is just an, an animation that we can call at any time from the blueprints and we can add effects such as motion warping so and we can do so many things on so what we can do is Select it, right click, go into create, and then create a new montage. And now you can press enter, and there we go, we can just open up. And this will be like the normal animation, but now we can add some things over here. So what we want to do is go and add the motion warping. So what we want to do is you start uh, and find the start position on the motion warping. In our case, this keyframe over here, around in the timeline in 5, looks pretty good. So we're going to go into the section where we have notifies and in the first track we're going to do is place our cursor right on top of the timeline right click go into add notify state i'm going to go into motion warping if you don't see motion warping is that you didn't enable the plugin correctly so let's go ahead and enable motion warping now you can see that we can drag it so what i want to do is hold shift and i'll go into the last uh, keyframe over here and start dragging it i want to drag it until around maybe 18 okay pretty much nearly 18 like 17 over here so basically the notify states will be basically just for duration and i notify normal notify will be for example play sound which will be just one frame so what we want to do is basically just apply the motion warping during this uh timeline over here 
Now, what we want to do is go ahead and have another motion warp in. So we will have three different states, okay? Because we will have the starting point where we jump into it, then the um, basically the middle point when we are basically going and landing and jumping again, and then the final landing one, okay? So what we had to do is to make things a bit cleaner and don't have like things going on top of each other. What we can do is go into notifies and here just place add notify track. And this will create another track. So now in the bottom one, we can just add another no motion warping uh, notify state. So what we want to do is go around into 26 over here. Okay. There, this doesn't need to be exact. Okay. This is an uh, approximation. Now you can later on tune in a bit better the motion warping. I'm going to place the cursor on top, go into uh, notify state, and again, motion warping. Now holding shift, we can see that we can go and drag the animation. So this will be around a bit more than 40. So around 40, 41. There we go. So this will be the basically the middle point of the motion warping. And now we will add another motion warping. The last one, which will be the landing point. So what we want to do is go around here. So basically, just before like 37, something like that. And we want to go up in the other track. So we have space. This is what I mentioned before of overlapping. And we just want to add another motion warping. And then hold shift and then move it into this final uh, press over here. So I guess we could add it into 50. Okay, so now we have a one shot warping. And, you know, in the preview, it will not change anything. But now what we have to do is select this uh, first motion warping. And if we go into the details panel, that if you don't see it, again, you can go into windows and details. We can start changing the uh, the options. So what we want to do is, first of all, make sure that the room motion modifier, it is on skew warp. Okay. And now we need to set a name. So in our case, this will be the vault start. Okay. The beginning of the vaulting. And now what we want to do is just ignore the set axis in this first warping because we don't want to be um, affected by the uh, Z axis, okay? Now we're gonna go and select the second um, motion warping. And again, skew warp, and the name this time will be the middle uh, vault. Oh, I think uh, vault middle. I think I put vault in the other one first. Yeah, vault start, vault middle. And now this time, we want to have the ignore Z axis on top, but we want to disable warp rotation. And we want to go into the last one, and this will be the vault land. I don't know if I'm saying vault, vault, I don't know. I'm Spanish, I don't know how really how you spell it, but hopefully it doesn't annoy you. Okay, and now what we want to do in this last one is disable warp rotation and ignore Z axis. So we will only have the translation. Great, so now we have our um, motion warping in an animation montage set up. So now we can go ahead and save and close it. So Control Shift S to save everything. So now let's go ahead and open the third person character blueprint. Let's go to third person, blueprints, and open the third person character. Great, let's go into the van graph, and you can see what we did in last episode, which was the crouching and stuff, which actually what we can do is select everything and press C so we can have a nice comment. And let's go ahead and put just crouch. And to to have things a bit more organized and looking better, I'm gonna select the other comment and I'm gonna go and open the comment color and select the hexam uh, color, copy it, and then in the other comment that I have just placed, basically just paste it. So now it looks pretty much exactly the same. Great. So the first thing I have to do is go ahead and add the motion warping component. So we're gonna go ahead and go to add motion warping. And then we'll just press enter and we don't have to touch anything. So now what we have to do is go ahead and create a new function. Let's go in here, function, and this will be basically vault or however it's spelled. Great, so here we go. We are starting with the actual system of the vault and basically in here we're gonna calculate all the different points that we have to go. So the first thing that we have to do is basically make a for loop. For loop with break, okay? So not the uh, for loop with the array, okay? We want to have a begin and last index. So I had a bit of trouble to find it, but here it is. And the last index will be two. So basically we want to do three line traces. So I'll explain in a second what a line trace is. But what we want to do is actually 
a sphere trace by chance. So I, I just said line trace, sphere trace is basically the same, but instead of being a line, it's just a whole sphere. Okay, so we want to create a sphere trace by channel. And this will basically be an invisible sphere that will appear in a certain location and with a certain radius and stuff that it will detect some ob uh, objects. So in our case, we will start detecting the objects that we want to vault and stuff, okay? So what we want to do is go ahead and get the actor uh, location, okay? So we want to start our trace from where the player is at. What we want to do now is go ahead and add. I want to go ahead and right click and split it. So we have all the individual axes over here. And basically what we want to do is put this a bit to the right and we want to get the index of our loop. And we want to go ahead and uh, here time this by 30. So basically we will be creating three different line traces with a an offset of 30. So basically a bit um, separated from each other. So that will be the Z value over here. Okay, let's put this over here. There we go. And this will be our starting point. So really, if I go now and compile and save and I write you, so it's going to be around five. It's going to be kind of a bit thin. And then I say in the book type for duration. And then we go into the Venn graph and we go and say, for example, when we uh, press left shift okay we will call vault let's see what this happens over here so we have press play and press vault you will see that we have uh basically three sphere traces i say line traces but you get by point as uh, sphere traces going uh from a 30 <coughs> 30 of separation from each other into the uh, into the point so in here what we'll do is basically just point them uh, in front of us and check the objects that are basically in front of us okay so this is the idea so let's go into vault <coughs> sorry about the coughing guys and we want to um basically set an ending point because if not they will go into the zero 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 and we don't want that okay we want to have them just in front of us so what we want to do is get the actor rotation and what we want to do is basically get the forward vector so basically where the character is right now looking and we want to go ahead and multiply this right click convert to a float by the distance so how much we want to uh, detect the objects so for example let's put like 180 right now and now what we want to do is get this um pin over here and basically add these two vectors together and this will give us our endpoint so now if we compound and save and press play you will see that now when i uh, vault now we have the uh, different sphere traces just in front of me instead of going to this zero. Great, so everything is working pretty good and pretty fine. <coughs> so now we can go ahead and continue. So now what we want to do is go and check with a branch that we have actually headed something. And if so, we want to go ahead and break, uh, break the hit result. So we have all the different parameters about the object that we have just hit, like the location and so and so on. So if we have hit something, we want to immediately break this loop over here. So we're going to just get the um, uh, make actually. Yeah, we can just get the true ragged and going to break. And what we can do to make things more organized is just double click and then make a pin. OK, and then double click and make another pin. And we can drag this one over here. OK, so <laughs> since we have detected something, we don't need to make more as sphere traces because we have the height so we can go ahead and stop the loop okay if it makes sense so um this is very good explained if we for example go in here and i just get for example this actually let me add just a cube okay and then bring it here and then i just make a bit like this i'm up so you will see that it will only make one line trace because it only has collated once now if i make it a bit up over here now it will do two line trace until it touches the object you know and if not it will do the three so you get that point basically okay so what we want to do now is drag this and make a sequence because we will have one more thing so there you go and what we will do 
is go and make another loop. So again, for each loop with break, not with array. Oh no, sorry, the, the, the problem is that I'm, I'm writing for um, each, and it's not, it's just for loop with breaks. So that was the problem. I have this um, thing where I always use it for each loop with break, that's why. Okay, so this time the last index will be around, let's say, five. So we'll have six different traces. And the thing that we have to do right now is <coughs> go ahead and make another sphere trace by channel. So we can just copy our previous one, paste it, and now each time we will go ahead and make a trace. Great. So what we want to do now is basically get the location where we have hit and add basically 90 or well, 100 uh, basically in a height. So you will see how this goes, okay? But now what we want to do is again, get the index and do the same thing that we did before, okay? But this time with around 50. So we want to go ahead and have different line traces with a 50 of separation between them. So what we want to do now is go ahead and add. All right, let's make it here. Great, we can just put them here, okay. And what we want to do is basically add the get actor uh, rotation and get forward vector. So we again want to get the, um, the forward of the player and we want to multiply this by this separation over here. And now we can go ahead and add this. So there's a lot of connectors over here. <laughs> Maybe it's a bit confusing, but um, you will see how it looks in a second. So probably it will clear up your mind a bit better. Another thing that we have to do is plug it to the start. So you will see that now, uh, when I press play, let's say, yeah, we go here and it will create some line traces right up following the path and with a 50 separation, great. Now the thing is that we have to set the endpoint. If not, we'll go again to the zero zero. So what we can do is get this point and just subtract like a thousand um, into the endpoint. <coughs> Sorry, not a thousand, only a hundred because we don't have we don't want to basically allow our player to vote into like 50 meters down, only a few meters. Um, so this is great. So now when I collide, you can see the line trace now going into a row forward, but downwards. So basically on here, we will see the distance that we have to vote. So basically, if I make this per system, and I can just show you a bit how it looks. So I can just go here. So first of all, we will go ahead and make a line trace uh, in the in like forwards, seeing okay, which height do we have to go ahead and vote? Great. And now we will see, well, um, which distance we have to uh, to go ahead and vote. So you can see that here is colliding, here is colliding, here is colliding, but here is not colliding. So when we check that it is no longer collided, we can see that okay, now in here. It is where we're gonna go ahead and vote because the object has finished. So now we can go ahead and end over here. So this is why we're doing this, okay? Great, so now that we have uh, cleared a bit these things over here, we can go ahead and continue. So now the radius, I will go ahead and increase this one into 10 and put this back to for duration. Okay, so now what we want to do is again, make a branch to check if we have hit something and then break the hit result, okay? So it will contain all of the parameters once again. Great, so what we want to do now is make another sequence over here, okay? And we'll basically just uh, continue making some more right casts and seeing where we have to end and so on. <coughs> okay, so what we have to do now is make a branch. And basically what we have to do is get this index over here and check if it's the first point. So what we want to do now is get this, making an equal sign. In this case, it will be a an integer, which I don't see it, but I think I can just use this. Get the index and plug it in. There we go. And now we can double click to make a root. So it's a bit uh, cleaner, as you can see. Great. So if the rate that we have uh, basically hit it, it is the first index, the first one, what we want to do is go ahead and create a new variable, which will be the um, vote start uh, pause. 
and now we want to change this into be a vector so this will be our position where we will start voting so now we can go ahead and get this and set it with this specific uh, location here so we want to go ahead and drag it here now we can double click and drag it here so it's a bit more uh, organized once, once again and now what we can do to basically uh, preview this is just get this and then draw a sphere uh, the bug sphere and now we can go ahead and just put like 10 a duration of 10 and a thickness of 2 for example and this to be uh, purple <coughs> so now we will see where we want to start now i will go ahead and get rid of this because it's not a really good example and i will for example get this cube over here i will just duplicate it you can do the same just duplicate that sphere over there ctrl d cube not sphere and then we can use the the r or the tool over here to rescale it and we can make it uh, way smaller so basically kind of like this maybe it's a good um so you can change the values over here in the scale directly and now you can see there we go you can see this point this is where the vaulting uh, will start the motion warping so where it will go basically towards so you can see how it's going over there great now in the sequence uh so you have if it doesn't do anything we don't want to do anything okay it's not the first point we don't want to do anything we only want to get the first point now what we want to do is in the sequence is get the basically the the distance point okay so let's go and get this and this actually the middle point okay it's actually the middle point so a vault middle pause and again it's gonna be a vector now a thing that i'm going to do is go ahead and create a how was it let's go and create a category so it is a bit more uh, organized okay so you can see we have categories over here so let's do the same so what we can do is go into what was it uh category here so we need to select the variable go into category i normally don't create categories okay but now we can change the name and this will be into vault uh yeah vault and i will do the same with this one but now we can select it great so now it's a bit more organized later on when this player starts growing and stuff and actually later on if we want if we see that it's a big chunk we can move it into a separate component but i think honestly because we have it tidy we can for now keep it like this okay so yes, so now we want to get the vault middle pause. It's basically the distance that we have to basically um, vault, vault, however you spell it. And now we want to double click here and then we can use the same pin. And now we can connect it. So now this will be the destiny pause kind of. And now we can again, copy this and paste it and draw another uh, debug pause. And after I'm gonna get these points and move it here so it's a bit more organized. And this time let's say that's gonna be yellow, okay? And then we need to pass this location. So now, Control Shift S, guys, to save everything into now, just in case it crashes or whatever. Okay, and now if I vote, you can see the separate points. So hit collide, 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 and no. So what I was saying before. So this is the depth. So here it will start, then it will go into here, into the middle point, and then later on we'll get the landing position. Great. So what we want to do now is go ahead and um Mm -mm. yeah continue with the branch so if we have not hidden anything that means that we are in that landing position like can just show you now okay so this time we want to do a normal line trace by channel there's no necessity of doing a sphere and now we can double click and put this here so it's a bit more organized more clean and basically this trace uh, start will be the starting point of the last trace so if i vault you will see that the last trace was the one that didn't hit anything. So we want to get a starting point in that. And we want to add an offset into this, okay? So the offset of this, <coughs> sorry about the coughing, uh, guy over here will be again, the get actor rotation. I don't know how to spell. <laughs> rotation, my goodness, totation, no. Rotation, there we go. And we want to again get the forward vector, so we want to basically get what are the characters looking. And uh, what we want to do is multiply this, and it's going to be the distance. This is going to be basically the distance that we will land. So right click, convert into a float, and let's set it to, let's say, around 80. Okay, and now this will be the position. So we'll get the, the trace start, but with an offset of 80 
forward. So that's a landing position. <laughs> How many times I have said landing? I don't know. Anyway, this will be a starting point. And now our end point will be basically this, but subtracting and just downwards. In our case, this will be a thousand. So we want to basically get this line trace until we touch the ground. Okay, great. And now what we want to do is basically make a branch. Okay. And then again, our head, we need to break it. So we get all the parameters and we need to get the location. Right click, promote to variable. And now this will be the vault land pass. And I'm going to go ahead and set it into vault in the category. And now in true, we can plug it in. And great. This will be the vault land pass. And now what we want to do is basically break the loop because we don't want to continue making more right guess. So we need to make a massive, <laughs> a massive arrow here. So let's see. Uh, so we can just go ahead and get it. And I think that we can just do is just say uh, add a uh, rewrote node. And now I can just put this here and I'll drag it. And now here add a uh, route, rewrote, uh, I don't know how it's spelled this node. And then here we can just drag it and plug it into the break. And it did break the loop. Great. Okay. Wait, it's not plugging in. Okay. Uh, don't worry. Let's just plug it into break. Okay. I don't know why it wasn't letting me. Okay. Double click and it will let you. Okay. Weird things. Anyway, you can just drag it and there we go. So yeah, basically we just have to go and stop the loop over here. Okay. And we have to do this routing, but it is what it is because it is a, um, Basically, it's a function, and if not, we could just create a custom event and call it here, but hey, <coughs> it is what it is. So now we can just compile and save. So we go ahead and check this over here. You can see that um, we have a line trace appearing, which you guys cannot see it uh, because we don't have it in for duration. And let's put the trace color to be, let's say, um, green, okay? Actually, not green now because it's the hit color. So blue, let's say blue. So now if we go here and trace, you can see this uh, trace over here. So this will be the landing position. Cool. <laughs> so in here, basically, we will land. Great. So I believe that I don't miss um, anything. So I guess we can just continue. Great. So what we're going to do now is basically just um, uh, basically start making the room motion. So we have all the positions set up so we can go ahead and trace. We have the starting point, the middle point and the landing end point. So we have all the details that we need in order to pass to our animation montage and the motion, uh, motion warping. Great. So let's go ahead and start applying all that. So what we're going to do is go into the third person character blueprint and what we can do now is <coughs> sorry about the coughing again my goodness okay and now create another uh function which will be the vault um, motion warp great so what we're going to do in here is basically double check that we can warp and why well you will see thank god that i already did all this system in another project and experimented with it because there's a lot of things that can go wrong in this calculations that we did. Okay. So what we're going to do is go ahead and right click promote to variable and create a new um, node, which is can warp. Okay. Uh, so there we go. So can warp. Okay. So if it's true, what we're going to do is continue. Now, where do we set this can warp? Like, where do we do it? Well, of course, we're going to go into vault and we're going to go in here. So if we get a middle pause, you will say, OK, we can warp. And why are we doing this thing here in the middle position? It doesn't really make sense. The thing is that sometimes the line traces do not uh, collide with each other correctly or <coughs> follow the sequence correctly. And they miss sometimes the middle pause. So what we're going to do is say, hey, if you don't have a middle position, you cannot warp. And the thing is that if you don't have a middle position, but you warp, if you, you 
fly it, the character just explodes it, it is very weird so we want to make sure that we get a middle position so this is more like a patch <laughs> okay but um but yes basically just making sure that we have all the correct positions so we can warp okay so now we can go back into our uh voting motion warping and we can basically start making the uh the the motion warping and stuff but the first thing i want to do is go and get the character moon component and set the movement mode in here when it's true of course to be flying <coughs> so we will not be able to have normal um movement but we'll be in flying great so now another thing I want to do is set actor collision enable collision to be false because with my testing sometimes the actor collided with the obstacle and then it it just <laughs> yeah it just destroyed everything okay so we want to make sure that the collisions are disabled and now what we can do is finally get the motion warping and what we want to do is say add or update warp target so this will be basically the target and now we want to do is just get the settings right click and split it so now we have all these settings so now we want to set up the name so in our first let's start with the vault start position so let's go ahead and go into the characters rpg character animations vaulting and the vaulting montage and now we want to go ahead and select the first uh, montage and we want to put exactly the same name now if you remember you can just plug it in but i do recommend going selecting it copying it and then going back here and then pasting it okay it has to be exactly the same if there's a character missing or a a, um, I think it's also case sensitive, so the vault is in lowercase or a space at the end, it all messes up. So it has to be exact. That's why I recommend going copying and pasting it. And now the location will be basically the vault starting position. So there we go. Plug it in. There we go. Pretty, pretty cool. Now the warp target rotation will just be the get actor rotation. So the rotation basically of the vaulting will be exactly the same. We will not touch anything. And now the last two settings, we don't have to touch them. And that will do exactly the same. So copy these three nodes, except for the position, paste it. And now we will do the same, but with the middle one. So let's go ahead and plug it. And we need to go into the montage, select the second motion warping, copy the name, go in here and paste it. Make sure there's no any spaces at the end or whatever. Okay, guys. And now we want to do the same. I want to get uh, these three nodes, paste them, and then the end is going to be the land position. And now I'm going to plug this in, and now again, we're going to go into the montage, go into the last um, motion warp, copy the name, and we're going to go into the third person blueprint and paste it. Great, compile and save. So now we are setting these positions, which basically will allow us to make the motion warping towards um, that places. So now it comes the best part, which is going ahead and playing the montage. So if it's not uh, play any montage, uh, we are going to get the advanced one because it gives us more options. So we can just get the play montage. Oh, yeah. So uh, this is so bad. So I just forgot in functions, we can we can't go ahead and place any delays or any other time um, any other note that basically changes the sequence of time so this is just done pretty much on one frame so the thing is that the play montage note that i was gonna say contains an uncompleted output so instead of in the same frame we can just get when the animation would have finished but the thing is that well that basically changes the sequence of the how this runs so we cannot use it on the uh, function. So what I'm going to do is go into this. And I'm going to go ahead and copy everything. And then accept the first node. Control X. And I'm going to go into the event graph. And then create a you know, custom event. So let's say add custom event. It's going to be, uh, what was it? Vault motion warp. <coughs> Ah, it doesn't let me because it's the same name. I uh, just put two and paste it, and I will change the name, okay? 
So plug it in. Okay, select this node. We can press C to comment it. This is gonna be the fault motion warp. And now we can just plug this in here. And then we need to go ahead and get the vault motion warp, which doesn't contain anything, and delete it, okay? Press uh, Supremere, or delete, I don't know how it's in English. And I can go into the Venn graph and change the name into vault motion warp. Great. So now we can indeed go here and say, get the mesh, and say, play montage, if I know how to split it. There we go, play montage. So we need to plug in the mesh. And now we need to select the asset, which will be the bolt over that we have just created before. And now in uncomplete, we can go ahead and set back the character moon component. Set movement mode to walking. And all that you see stuff, we can set the actor collision back on. So tick it. And then we can go ahead and what we're going to do it get it can warp and I set it to false. <coughs> I'll explain one in a second. And then when you get the land uh, position, we're gonna set it. And then the Z will be around 20,000. I'm gonna say, why? What just happened here? <laughs> why are you doing this at the end? Let me just explain it in a second. But first of all, Let's go ahead and we have to do one last check over here. And also we have to call this motion warp. So we're gonna go into the vault, okay? <coughs> and the thing is that here, um, we have to call the motion warp. So basically, uh, sorry, not here at the end, okay? It's not at the end. It's actually at the second trace on the uncomplete. So why are we doing it on the second trace instead of the end? Well, this is because on this last trace, we are breaking this loop. So when this is completed, basically everything, all the calculations have finished. So in this completion, we can call the um, about motion warp. Okay, actually we can just put it over here. Great, so this is what it will trigger there. Cool, so now we can compound save. Now it will call, but we have to make one more change. We say at the end, what we have to do is Basically get this and get the land position. We're gonna get, I'm gonna right click and split so we have all the axes. I'm gonna check that the Z is in range, the float. And I want to get the return value and add, and then plug it in here, and then the can warp here into this node and here. So basically these two nodes have to be uh, true in order to, to proceed. So basically the main value will be the uh, mesh. Get world location. Now I'm gonna split it. I'm gonna set, and I'm gonna basically in this one, subtract it. So the minimum will be minus 50 and plug it in. And the other one will be plus 50. So basically we need to also put this here. It's a bit better, there we go, put this here, great. And we'll take this too, so it is also including the 50 and 50. Great. So what is this doing? Well, basically, the thing is that sometimes uh, the landing position might be uh, basically on top of the player's head, far away up. And in that case, we don't want to motion warp, okay? We only want to motion warp if basically the, 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 the thing the landing position is in between that range of the player's uh, position and the set minus 50. So basically kind of in this point over here, not on here or on here. You know what I mean? So this will prevent us from climbing this wall uh, at once and then finishing uh, underground, okay? Basically, <laughs> it's just checking that, okay? And then what I did here was basically setting up to 2000 at the end of the of the completion why well again basically if we go into any uh, wall that is up the landing position will not basically get updated this is because the calculations will not get into here so the the landing position will not but yes the starting and the middle point sometimes so 
it will basically not update the landing position and it will get the last one so let's say that we just jumped over here the wall that we had over here which it is unloaded we just want to reload the scene sometimes the open world map is just basically unloads things okay so imagine that we vote this okay and we have set the variable of the landing position to whatever height over here <coughs> so now if we go and vote this maybe the we get the first point which is um the starting point and the middle point but not the end point so basically if that value is still there of the landing position we will basically jump and then teleport into this landing position but because we set it with this range calculation here and then this massive number it will say hey it is out of bounds we don't want to jump over here so we'll prevent it okay it is extremely confusing maybe i don't know how to really explain it uh, so you can visualize it but it's basically just a quick way of just making sure that everything is on um on on the correct values okay <coughs> great so it is time to test it out finally so much time waiting for this moment you can now press play you can see this uh this wall we can go towards it we can press shift and woo, there we go you can see how cool it looks let's do it again wow that looks absolutely amazing guys look at this yeah so motion warping working so yeah it looks absolutely incredible guys so look what i was saying if i jump here it will not let us and basically you're maybe saying okay what if we want to jump there well we would use another vault system later on the thing is that you can see that this vault goes from up to down and the thing as here is that this place goes uh this mesh over here goes just up and then finishes here so if our animation was keep going it will need to go down again but it will trespass so that's why we did all that calculation so it cannot go now in the future we will add more vaulting mm, animations and stuff so we will include one that will only jump here okay great guys so if you found it so helpful i would really appreciate if you could like the video and subscribe to my channel i have lots of unreal engine 5 tutorials at this one so if you want to go ahead check them out also see the full playlist until now of the rpg series and leave a comment below of some things that you want to see Probably next episode, we'll start with the assassinations and start with the combat feeling and stuff. So I'm very excited. Now, if you want to see first, before that, the source control tutorial, I can go ahead and um, make it so we can basically just set the source control. So leave me your comment what you think in the description. Anyway, go ahead and join the Discord server so you can show your progress and ask any questions. And now, yes, with all that said, subscribe and like the video. And with all that said, bye bye.